He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Let's take a look at a few questions regarding molecular properties. The first one asks, ethers are more volatile than alcohols with the same molecular formula. Why? And we have four possible reasons there. The second asks, the lattice energy of an ionic compound depends on, and some options here. And then for the third one, orthonitrophenol is less soluble in water than the para or meta isomers because, and we have four options here. So this is actually jumping a little bit into some organic chemistry. There is a few organic chemistry concepts here. So if you are looking only at general chemistry, this might be a little bit tricky to answer, but this is on the exam you're studying for. So go ahead and check out some of my organic chemistry tutorials if you need a refresher, and when you're ready, give this a try. So for this first one, we're looking at ethers and alcohols with the same molecular formula. And we're saying that ethers are more volatile, which means they more readily enter the gas phase. They more readily go from liquid to gas. So let's just draw some examples. What if we draw a, a dimethyl ether and ethanol? These are both C2H6O. So these are structural isomers of one another, uh, which means they have the same molecular formula but one is an ether and one is an alcohol. So what can we identify about these molecules? Well, the ether has no capacity to make hydrogen bonds. There are no OH bonds on this molecule because the oxygen has two bonds, both of which are to carbon. So there are no, there is no potential for hydrogen bonding with this ether. However, with ethanol, we do have a hydroxyl group. We have this OH group here. So that is capable of making hydrogen bonds. And hydrogen bonds are, are very strong intermolecular forces, much stronger than the small dipole-dipole interactions that can happen with ether. And because there is much stronger hydrogen bonding going on in solution, it will require much more heat energy to pull those molecules apart because they're interacting so strongly. So it will take more heat energy to liberate those molecules into the gas phase. So for this reason, uh, it's going to be option C. There are intermolecular hydrogen bonds with alcohols, right? So we see this with the alcohols and not with the ethers. So that will be option C. The second one asks, the lattice energy of an ionic compound depends on. So uh, let's pull up an ionic compound. Let's take a look at this lattice here. So we see some cations and we see some anions. And this is going to be governed by Coulomb's law. So we have F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. So the relevant variables here are the Q1 and the Q2. Those are the charges on the ions. So we could have plus one and minus one. We could have plus two and minus two. And then on the bottom, we have R squared. And R is basically the distance between the ions, which really just depends on the size because those are pretty much uh, stuck right up against one another. So if we're looking at the distance between the ions as the distance between their centers, the very central point of the ion, then and that distance increases as those ions get bigger, right? If the ions are bigger, then their centers get farther apart. And so we notice that uh, both of these are parameters uh, for Coulomb's law. And so it, the answer is going to be A. This does depend both on the charges, right? If we have two plus versus one plus or two minus versus one minus, that's going to be a stronger attraction and therefore a larger lattice energy but it also depends on the size of the ion. So we're looking at A for the answer here. Now for this last one, we're looking at orthonitrophenol, uh, uh, and we're trying to understand why that is less soluble in water than the para or meta isomers. And so first, let's just go ahead and draw these molecules. So a nitrophenol, remember that a phenol is just a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group, right? So it's a phenyl alcohol, so phenyl, alcohol, phenol. 
uh, and then nitro means we have a nitro group. So it's a phenol with a nitro group. That's a nitro phenol. And then this can be ortho, meta, or para. Once again, that refers to the spatial arrangement of these two groups. So the leftmost one there is ortho because they're adjacent. The one in the middle is meta because they're two away. And then the one on the right is para because they are three away on opposite sides of the ring. And so what we want to understand is that the ortho nitrophenol has a very special situation because that hydroxyl group is adjacent to that nitro group and there will be interactions there. And so because that hydroxyl is interacting with that nitro group, that means that the hydroxyl group will be less available for interactions with solvent. And those are the interactions that would make it soluble, right? Something is going to be soluble uh, in water if it is able to interact with water molecules. So if that hydroxyl group is too busy interacting with that nitro group to be able to interact with the water that is around it, that will necessarily make it less soluble. And so the answer here is going to be B. Orthonitrophenol shows intramolecular hydrogen bonding, intra meaning amongst, you know, within the same molecule rather than with other molecules. And so we see that for the ortho isomer, whereas for the meta and para, those groups are too far apart, that interaction does not occur. So the answer will be B for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.